Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the new Jumper T16 Pro remote controller. In this video I'm going to go over its new features and compare it with the previous version and in addition I'm also going to show you how to upgrade your existing T16 remote controller and add the Pro capabilities. The original Jumper T16 remote controller was released about a year and a half ago. And since the internal transmitting model of my Taranis X90 Plus decided to stop functioning properly, I've been using it for the last year in order to control FRSky compatible receivers. After using this remote controller for the last year, I can tell you that my general experience using it was pretty good. I did have some issues with it, for example, I had problems with the scroll wheel which I had to replace, and I was told later on by Jumper that this issue was resolved in the production version. In addition, some of the sticks also stopped functioning properly and again I was told by Jumper that this issue was resolved since this is an early production version. Now let's go over the differences between the Pro version and the previous one. First of all, the gimbals were upgraded to whole sense of gimbals. I'm not sure if you're going to feel the difference when flying your drone. And probably the biggest advantage of having whole sensor gimbals is that they are going to last you for a much longer time than normal ones since they are not using any friction in order to detect the movement of the gimbal. Another major difference between the versions is that the original Jumper T16 did not feature any internal transmission unit and it relied on an external multi-protocol model. In case you are a Crossfire user like me, you know that even though it's not that hard, it can be quite inconvenient to change between different models when flying different quadcopters. The Jumper T16 Pro now features an internal multi-protocol transmission model, and now the JR Bay is free to accommodate whichever model that you would like to use. Just like the whole sense of gimbals, the new internal transmission multi-protocol model can be purchased separately and installed on the previous Jumper T16, and shortly I'm going to show you how it's done. Now just like the original Jumper T16, the Pro version is powered by two 18650 lithium-ion batteries. However, on the new version, a balance lead has been added, and now it's easier to balance charge the batteries using the included battery bay using an adapter such as this one. In terms of appearance, both versions look pretty much identical, except now the color of the T16 logo is silver instead of red. In addition, it seems to me that the Jumper T16 Pro is using higher quality components, but I'm not 100% sure about it, and maybe it just seems to me like that, because this is a brand new remote controller. Now finally, before showing you the upgrading procedure, there are some good news that you should be aware of. When the original Jumper T16 was released, it wasn't supported by OpenTX due to political disagreements, and Jumper had to fork a different branch from the original branch of the OpenTX and named it Jumper TX. Luckily for us, now OpenTX decided to fully support the Jumper remote controller and you can use the latest OpenTX firmware. These are great news because previously you had to rely on Jumper to release new firmware updates, but now you can rely on OpenTX, which is a very popular open source project. Now I'm going to show you how to upgrade the original Jumper T16 to the Pro version by adding the whole sensor gimbals and the internal multi-protocol model. The first thing that you need to do is to unplug the battery, then remove the current multi-protocol model, remove the two rubber covers, then I recommend to put something to protect the gimbals, remove the side rubber grips, then remove these two hex screws from the top of the remote controller, Pull this plastic part and remove these six screws which are located on the back of the remote controller. Then carefully remove the back cover and now we can access the internal components of the remote controller. Changing both gimbals and internal model is pretty simple and not going to require you any soldering work. Let's start with changing the internal model. First of all, what you need to do is to unplug this connector. Then remove these three screws. Then remove this part and put it aside. Maybe you can save it as a souvenir. Then put back the new multi-protocol transmission model instead. Secure it using the same screws which you just removed. Put back the connector. Then secure the antenna connector to the top part of the remote controller using the two provided screws. In case you are not going to replace the gimbals, 
At this stage, you can just simply reassemble the remote controller. In order to replace the gimbals, you will need to first remove the four screws that are holding them, one on each corner. The last screw on the top left corner is a little bit tricky, and I recommend to remove this flat cable before removing it. Then you'll need to unplug the gimbal and simply remove it. In case you are wondering, these are of course not the original stick ends of the gimbals of the Jumper T16, and I took them from the Flysky Underground Nirvana remote controller. Now we need to repeat the same steps for the second gimbal. Before assembling the new gimbals, here you can see how the new hole sensor gimbal looks next to the original one, which was just removed. Now simply assemble the gimbals in the same manner you disassembled the previous one, plug their connectors, and you'll pretty much be good to go. Now by the way, I highly recommend when disassembling the older gimbals to remove these two parts from the sides, otherwise you are highly likely to ruin these connectors, which I probably did. So in order to avoid it, first unplug these parts, then disassemble the gimbals, assemble the new ones, and then reassemble these two parts back. Now before reassembling the remote controller, I recommend to adjust the gimbals according to your preference. Now it's a little bit too tight, so let's release it a little bit. And now after adjusting the gimbals, we can reassemble the remote controller. So we are going to do everything in reverse order. First we're going to put the back cover. Make sure that everything aligns properly, especially the battery balance connector. Then secure the two screws on the top of the remote controller. Put back the side rubber grips. Then secure the back cover using the six screws that you previously removed. Put back the back rubber covers. And finally the battery. Let's check that everything powers up. And as you can see right now, we're getting a throttle warning. So as you can see, the gimbals are not calibrated. But anyway, before calibrating the gimbals, we need to upgrade the software, since the current firmware cannot work with the internal transmission model. Now in order to update the remote controller to the latest firmware, we need to head over to Jumper's firmware page. You can find multiple options, including different languages, and the files that end with flex are intended for FRSky R9 users. I'm going to download the latest English version, which is currently T16 2.3. And in addition, I'm also going to download the latest SD card contents. Then you need to remove the micro SD card from the Jumper T16 remote controller. Replace the contents of the micro SD card with the one you just downloaded. Now we need to copy the new firmware that we just downloaded to the firmware folder on the micro SD card. Put it back. And now, in order to flash the new firmware, we need to put the remote controller in bootloader mode. In order to do that, hold the T4 and T1 trim buttons towards the center, and long press the power button. Then select right firmware, select the firmware that you just copied to the back SD card, long press the select button, and it will take about 20 seconds for the new firmware to be flashed. Then hit return, select exit, Welcome to Jeopardy X. and now we need to calibrate the gimbals. So in order to do that, head over to system, calibration, and follow the instructions on the screen. So basically all you have to do is to press enter, put all the sticks in the center. Now just move all the gimbals and sliders. And by the way, this slider is not working, so pay attention when installing the new gimbals. Now press enter, and the gimbals should function properly. So after turning off the remote controller, and turning it back on, we're not getting any throttle warning. We are only missing one step in order to complete the transformation of this older remote controller to the pro version. So what we need to do is to remove this T16 sticker and replace it with the new one. So now I can tell you that the transformation has successfully completed. 
And I actually recommend that if you already have the Jumper T16 remote controller, the best mode would be to replace its internal module. And I recommend not to touch the gimbals. What you can do is to order the whole sensor gimbals and put them aside. And only in case something happens with your current gimbals, then replace them. So now finally in conclusion, let me show you how you can successfully run the Crossfire model in addition to the internal transmission model. Under these settings, you can see that I'm using the internal model and over here you can select between the different options and you can also use FRSky D16 and D8 protocol. So now the internal model is running and if I would like to use the Crossfire model, I can create a new model, which I've already done. So I can simply select this model, head over to the settings, and as you can see, the internal module is off and the external RF is set to Crossfire and the Crossfire module is now working. So overall, I can tell you that the Jumper T16 Pro is a great upgrade over the previous model. And even though you'll be able to find the previous model for a reduced cost, I recommend to go for the Pro version. As I mentioned before, in case you are already a T16 owner, I recommend just to get the internal model and perform the upgrade since it's extremely easy. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.